Hi guys and welcome back to the Liverpool career mode. This is episode 9. I apologise that it's been a little while since I've uploaded. Um, I've been busy with work etc. And I actually played Ultimate Team last weekend um, to see how that was, um, was for the Premier League Team of the Season. Hoping to get some Liverpool Team of the Seasons in the red picks. Unfortunately, um, I didn't do very well at all. Um, I, I, I got 11 wins which is very good. But in terms of my luck, I only got Trent Alexander-Arnold and Ruben Diaz. So I didn't hit any of those sort of like top tier players, which was a bit disappointing. Probably means I won't be playing much Ultimate Team, which is absolutely fine. We're straight back into this career mode, um, which I'm really looking forward to. We've got um, a couple of um, lower table, lower down in the table teams coming up. We've got Bournemouth, Fulham and Burnley. And then we have Manchester City in the uh, Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. So they, they'll be the four games in this episode. Uh, let's get into the game and I'll tell you about the team. So for this game at home at Anfield, back at the Fortress hopefully, um, we're playing our basically the strongest team. Um, Alisson, Robbo, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent, Fabinho, Thiago, uh, Bellingham... And then, obviously, Salah, Mane and Jota as our front three. What I will note is I have changed our tactics um, and our player instructions after a comment in the last episode that hopefully will make our um, fullbacks get a lot further forward and make our sort of team play more realistically. Sorry, I've just got Bellingham here. here. Good save early on. Um, hopefully, it will make our team play more like Liverpool play. So, Trent and Robbo getting more assists, getting more... Um, involved further forward it will also test my defending and as we know my defending isn't great already basically just sacrificing the um, the defending objective I don't think that's going to happen with seven clean sheets in a row but hopefully it will make the career mode a little bit harder for me because we've we've been winning a lot of games in the last season and a half pretty easily um, even some tough games like Man City I think we beat like 6-0 or 6-1 or something and the community shield didn't we so trying to just make it as a little bit more difficult we have our defenders on get forward and we have the other ones the center backs on step up so i'm not sure if the actual offside trap is going to work like they do in real life but hopefully we'll just get a few more interesting results rather than us just stomping the um our opponents every game so hopefully um, that goes well. Thank you very much for the comment in the last episode, and uh, yeah, hopefully it's it's some entertaining viewing. But you can just see Trent bombing on there. Give Salah a little bit more space on the overlap. I'm going to hit this. Oh, good save. The goalie's playing well so far. Thiago into Jota and hit that with his left foot. Ah, good effort. I don't know what they're doing, but somehow it worked. No, it didn't. We have got it back with Jude Bellingham. Thiago on the ball now. Bit of magic from him, maybe? Mm, not the best pass, but we've won it back. Great save again. Their keeper's on fire. Left foot from Bellingham, first time. It's in the corner. It's a good save. See if we can get anything. I don't know why Salah's on corners, but if it works... Oh, it nearly did work. Van Dijk with a good chance at the back post. I'm going to try and hit Van Dijk again. Ah, no. Keeper's got that. Please win that, Robbo. Nice. Mane plays into Thiago. Mane again. Jota turn. Finish Jota. Oh my gosh, what a miss. We've gone from scoring 22 goals in the last episode to not being able to finish at all this. That is so poor from Jota. Head that back. Uh, I can see the corner. Should be okay though. I, we've, we've got a reasonably big team out today. Mane should just touch this in front of him. Gives it into Bellingham. Liverpool are so good at these off the corner. Remember we sc scored one against Arsenal in about 16 seconds or something. We went from our end to their end. Come on. 
and we've done it again! Obviously not 16 seconds in game because that take about like two seconds. But um, yeah, that was a great finish from Sadio Mane. Really good goal. Um, there's a, that one against Arsenal I seem to remember where like Salah goes down the other end and scores and from the time they took the corner to the time we scored it was only maybe like 16 seconds or something so just shows the pace of Mane, Salah etc but that is a great finish he needed something special to beat this keeper and that is Manchester United are losing to Brighton at half time it's not quite 4-0 but it is 1-0 and Chelsea drawing with Newcastle uh, Spurs Spurs obviously smashed Arsenal last night in the North London derby but Arsenal winning 1-0 in this one and uh, yeah City beating Leeds which is pretty understandable oh. maybe if we can win it back get on the counter attack oh no Robbo's been done well up had to win that with Trent oh no Trent's down Hopefully he gets back up. That would be a nightmare. Oh, I don't know why I keep trying these balls over the top. Come on. Somehow the ball over the top works. Oh, it's a great save again. Is Trent injured? Oh, no. That is an absolute nightmare if Trent's injured. I'm going to take him off. I think we're going to have to put... Maybe if we put Joe Gomez out to right back. Um, and then... Let's do Canate into the midfield, uh, into the defence. Um, whilst we're here, maybe we take Thiago off as well and bring on Jordan Henderson and then just um, just trick the computer into thinking that Van Dyke's gone off, but actually he's still on. We just want to give Hendo the armband. There should just be a way of like when you make a sub, just saying like give the armband and then you know the new guy gets it. But alas. Hendo straight on taking over corner duty from Trent hopefully it's not a serious injury Bellingham oh squeeze with Fabinho and he's won it back come on Fab through to Jota he's perfectly timed his run finish yes Diogo Jota with the second hopefully wraps up the game barring for some defensive errors on my part it's very loud I apologise um, I, I tried to turn it down before the game but for some reason those animations just are really loud in my ear for some reason but yeah it's a good finish from Jota Fabinho with the assist hopefully that's enough to get the win Salah's nicked it again oh Fabinho clears it up Mane's in behind. Hit that Mane. Yes. Sadio gets his second of the game. He's been good this game. That's to sh that's that's definitely true. Salah hasn't really been involved too much, but um, I guess he did help win the ball back to start this attack. Mane just way too much pace for their right back, whoever that is, and it's a great finish into the corner. Mane with a couple of brilliant finishes across goal. Nyland maybe should be doing better there, but I don't know. It's hit hard. Great goal. Luis Diaz. Oh, it's intricate play. See if Robbo can find Salah. Oh, he can't. Don't know why Salah didn't just gamble that the ball was coming in, but... Back stick. Mane. Hat-trick hero, Sadio Mane. Salah with a much better ball in than the one that Robbo did. And, yeah. Mane playing through the middle. He's only been through the middle about five minutes. And he gets a goal straight away. Does well to get over the centre-back, I think. Yeah, really well to get above. And, yeah, too much power on the header from too close for the keeper to do anything. Nyland hasn't, hasn't covered himself in glory with that save, but did really well in the first half to um to stop some of our chances from going in Mane with the hat trick 4-0 should be curtains oh Joe Gomez too good at right back oh it's so nice from Salah as well he's really come into the game recently 
Oh, Fabinho's been excellent in there. And Luis Diaz in a race versus Steve Cook. There's only one winner. Oh no, I've taken a heavy touch, but that's absolutely fine. Mane gets his fourth. This is an absolute rout. We were poor in the first half. We couldn't take many chances. Jota had a couple of errors that we probably should have scored, I think. Salah had a chance. But thankfully, Sadio Mane has stepped up and he's got four goals. Anything KDB can do, Mane is matching it this game. They're trying to play out from the back still. I respect their, their philosophy, but it hasn't worked for them very well today. Canate with the most recent interception. Great ball from Hendo. Diaz has so much space to run into. And he finishes. Six goals! I was worried in the first half when we weren't finishing. I was thinking that our finishing has gone to pot, but only it takes a couple of goals from Sadio Mane and then our attack is suddenly back to its fluid best. Hopefully the injury to Trent will not mar the victory. Um, we'll find out at the end of the game obviously how serious that is. But apart from that, this game has been fantastic. So as you can see, Trent Alexander-Arnold has a bruised elbow injury and he'll be 100% fit in four days. So absolutely fine, nothing to mar the victory. And what I was saying earlier about how you know it might make us more defensively fragile um, with the new tactics. Well, thanks to the performances of Gomez, Fabinho and Van Dijk, we actually didn't let Bournemouth have a single shot. They didn't have a single shot. They had 0.0, .0 XG and we had 6.4. So it was a fantastic start to the new tactics. I'm not sure if it will be, um, if it will be just as good against better sides, but it was a really good start. And hopefully we'll go again against Fulham. So after the win against Bournemouth, in which Sadio Mane scored an incredible four goals, I've made three changes, I believe. Um, I've made uh, Cater in for Bellingham. Obviously, Trent Alexander-Arnold is out for the game. Um, so I've put Neko Williams in at right back. And then the final change, I put... Canate in for Joe Gomez because he was pretty tired having played um, at centre back and at right back for 90 minutes so yeah there are all the changes everything else remains the same let's see if we can get a good early start with Jota oh, it's a great save from Paolo Gazzaniga uh, see if we can find Van Dijk or Canate or someone Jota Neko Williams running down the Chasing Cabano, Cabano, don't really know how you say his name, but he's not done well enough. Neko Williams obviously playing against his old club. He was just on loan with them in real life this season. Um, it'll be interesting what we do with Neko Williams when he comes back from loan, but that is a bad, bad start from us. Knockhart, formerly at Brighton Hove Albion, I think he was. I don't know if he's at Fulham in real life, but that is... An infuriating goal to concede at Anfield. Poor start from us. It's a great skill to get past Van Dijk. And it's a really good finish past Allison. We need to play a little bit better and try and control the game a bit more. Two goals in seven games for Knockhart. A little bit ambitious from Thiago. And uh, Neko Williams has been done again. Nightmare performance from him so far. Might have to call on someone from the bench. I don't think Joe Gomez is even on the bench. I think he was too tired, so I just gave him a full rest. Come on, Neko, please. No. Oh, my gosh. I thought that was a pen. Ooh. We're having a really, really poor start to this game. They are really targeting Neko Williams at right back. And he's not up to the challenge at the moment. Let's try and defend this corner and then hopefully hit them on the counter-attack. Keeper. Well done, Allison. See if we can get the ball to Jota's feet. Go wide. See Salah. Come on, Neko. Good pass. Well done. Nabby lad. Go one more, Neko Williams. Come on. He's better at going forward than he is at defending, that's for sure. He's like Trent in that aspect. Oh, and it's another great save from Gazaniga. See if we can get... The first header off the corner again. Van Dijk. Ah. Oh. 
That was a really poor first half from us. They're taking off the goal scorer, Knockhart, for Deckled Over Reed. Deckled Over Reed, I think, actually scored the winner for Fulham at Anfield when we went on that six game losing streak um, when Van Dyke and Co were injured. So hopefully that's not a sign of more things to come. They're going to score. Oh, what a save, Allison! Get in front! Well done, Robbo. Offside. Right, we need to make some changes here. It is going so poorly. Let's go to a 4 2 3 1, I think. Um, first, we just need to change these guys to wingers, which I will do. Then I'm going to drop you to a. I, want, I actually want this guy to play as a centre forward top one I want to play as a centre forward so I have you as a cam and you as a centre forward right so what we're going to do is we're going to bring on Roberto Firmino at cam we're going to bring on Diaz who's going to play on the left Mane can play centre forward and then we're going to bring on Jordan Henderson to play um, there and then we just trick it obviously just to give it like that so we're going to go to a 4-2-3-1 like, like so and hopefully this works out a little bit better. I mean, I'm tempted to just take off Neko Williams and put Naby Keita in on a right back. Can he play there? Does he get really poor stats? I'm going to play him at right wing back. He gets a minus three. How does he compare with Neko Williams? He's still, still going to be a lot better, even with the minus three. So Naby's going to play right wing back. That's going to be the team. Let's get back into it. We need a goal. Come on, squeeze with Roberto Firmino. They've had to kick long. Please win this, Jordan Henderson. Well done. Needed to win that. I see Robbo coming on the outside. He's got there. Cross to Mane. Come on. That's it, lads. Get the ball. Get up the other end. Give them the ball back. And let's kick off again. Hopefully we can get back into this game. Sadio Mane was the one with the goal. Excellent from Andy Robertson on the overlap. He's been running non-stop all game like he always does. And he's basically just created that goal for Mane. Arte. Go right. Come on, Salah. Come on, Salah. 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 Come on. What a turnaround. We go to 4-2-3-1. There's a lot more space now for our front four. The Fulham midfield, probably just a bit overtired. They've been sprinting around all game. They can't track back. Firmino had so much time and, and Mane had so much time in the middle there. And finally, they, fi they found Salah. And Salah hasn't had the best two games of his career. But he steps up when we needed him most. Right, three more minutes to contend with. Plus stoppage time. Hopefully there's not... Another twist in the tail. Salah comes in here. Can't win the ball. Naby Keita. Um, the best thing I can say about him is that I haven't noticed him at right back. So it shows that he hasn't made any significant errors. Bobby, get that through. What? What? Why has it not gone to Mane? Oh no, that's why it didn't. Mane was offside. Was it tight? Ah, uh, not particularly. That's infuriating. I thought we could have been in there just to seal the game. Hopefully it's going to be over now. Fulham in no real urgency to get the ball forwards. And there it is. Finally. It'll be interesting to see the stats after this game. I thought we deserved a bit more. Like some of our finishing was really poor. But um, yeah, let's have a look. See what they say. We had 28% of the ball. Oh my God, that is woeful. Fulham have just come to Anfield and have 72% possession. <laughs> Thankfully, we destroyed them on expected goals, 1.9 to 3.8. But wow, 28%. I think that's the wor that's the lowest I've ever had on FIFA. And it's Fulham at Anfield. Klopp would not be happy with our performance there, that's for sure. But Thankfully, we got the three points. Here we go, away at Turf Moor. It still remains to be seen whether um, Turf Moor will be a Premier League stadium next season or not. Um, my money's on Leeds to go down, but 
Burnley are definitely still in the dogfight. We've made a couple of changes. Trent Alexander-Arnold has come straight back in, thankfully. Obviously only a short-term injury. Um, the front three remains the same as pretty much always um, in, the pre in the Premier League, that is. Um, Salah, Jota and Sadio Mane, who's on excellent form, Sadio Mane. Then Hendo comes into midfield for Thiago. It's definitely a Hendo game rather than a Thiago game versus Burnley. And Bellingham comes straight back in as well. Um, and then the back line, I bring in Joel Matip for a game. He, uh, he fits the Burnley... Um, he, fit, he fits um, the Burnley mantra, I think. And then, obviously, it leaves the two quicker centre-backs to play in the Carabao Cup versus Manchester City. But speaking of... Oh, no, I thought we were going to be in straight away for a goal. Jota recently has not been his usual self. Oh, it's a questionable pass from Matip. Great save from Alisson. Poor Matip put us in some deep trouble there Azur from the edge of the box it's a top top save from Allison. we do not want to give Burnley too many corners though that's for sure that's why I played um, Van Dijk and uh, Matip as a partnership this game and Trent Trent's kept it in well done now move the ball get that through come on Jota come on Jota come on Jota bit of speed yes Diogo Jota wasn't the best finishing in the last game versus Fulham. He was a key reason why we, we didn't sort of fulfil our XG last game. But thankfully he stepped up here with an early goal versus Burnley. Once he was in behind, it was really, really harsh. Um, really, really hard for him to be caught. I just knew that he had to get in front to get the strength. Show the strength to get in front. And then Roberts just wasn't going to catch him. And it's a great finish into the side netting. Well done. I don't often run with Van Dijk, but he's got the space in front of him. Back into Mane. Finesse. No! <laughs> I thought that was going to fall to Mo Salah, but unfortunately they managed to hit it off him for a goal kick. Hendo into Mo Salah. Gets in front of his man. Square it so easy this Burnley back line do not know what's hit them no wonder they're 20th in the league in this career mode Salah gets the ball from Hendo stands up his man waits for the run of Jota and it's such a simple finish for Diogo I've said it before anyone that plays as this Liverpool centre forward is just so so is just going to get so many chances and even if they're not the best natural finisher they're going to score goals. Robbo wins it back. Moves it into Jota. Salah's straight through the middle. Come on, Mo. Oh, it's a great save from Pope. I think I telegraphed exactly what I was going to do there. I should have cut back to the other side near post. But that's okay. We've got the corner. I might go short against Burnley. It probably makes sense, doesn't it? Mane gets some space. Oh, no. I thought I'd go for it, but not brilliant. Into Jota's feet. Back in. Move it. Mane. Cross to Jota. Ooh. That could have gone anywhere off the defender. And Robbo's won it straight back. Cross the front. Get there, Hendo. Oh, no. It didn't quite fall to Bellingham. No. Whoops. I thought that was just going to be a classic bring down the counter-attack, but... It nearly was a lot worse. Oh no, they're in behind. Ali, Trent, no. That is infuriating. They get us on the counter-attack. That is definitely a concern with our players bombing on a little bit further forwards. But I thought I had the numbers back to, um, to stop it, but unfortunately not. Maybe if I didn't slide in with Trent, it actually might have just hit him. But I don't know. Yeah, probably would have. But, oh well, 2-1. Let's get another goal just to get the two-goal lead back. Van Dijk should win that. Oh, I thought the ball had locked onto Trent again, but it didn't. No, no, not like this. No! 
McNeil has just sent Fabinho for a hot dog. I'm going to make that change. Jota off. I know he's on a hat trick. Is he on a hat trick? Yeah, I think he is on a hat trick. But Firmino's coming on. He, he was very good when he came on the last game. This would be very infuriating to drop points to the team 20th in the league. But respect to McNeil. That is a nice, intricate bit of dribbling. And a good finish past Allison. This game just suddenly got a lot tighter. Right, straight up the other end. Luis Diaz, come on. Mane, get in front of your man. I see Salah at the back stick. Come on. Come on. Mo. Salah. Come on, lads. This 4-2-3-1 just creates chances for us. So, so easily. But it is it is a little bit questionable defensively, especially with Jones as our the, you know, secondary defensive midfielder alongside Fabinho it's it's not as tight as obviously when you have Hendo in there and then an extra midfielder but going forward it's fantastic so I might just stick with it for a little bit longer and see if we can get a two goal cushion just to wrap the game up it's a great finish Mo Salah's weak foot first time bit a bit acrobatic as well Romeo why are they bringing on a holding midfielder when they need a goal oh it would be keeper Oh my god, Alisson, you absolute hero. And a great challenge from Van Dijk. We're going to really need to defend this corner. This save from Alisson. Oriol Romeo, the guy who I was literally just saying, why are they bringing on a holding midfielder when they need a goal? To be fair, maybe if it's a striker, he puts that in the corner. But great save from Ali nonetheless. And he's got the ball here. I might just attack. It's the Liverpool way, I know. Oh, maybe I've, I've butchered that. Come on, boys. No. These two have both been done on the outside. Come on, track that run. Well done, Van Dyke. No, keeper, keeper, keeper. Allison, you absolute saviour. Please win that. That's a foul, surely. Four minutes of added time. Allison, once again, has saved me. Thank God. Someone make a run. We can't get out. No. No. Oh, no. Not like this, lads. Alisson, please save it again. Oh, my God. Alisson, you are a hero. That is the end of the game. That is last sort of six or seven in-game minutes were impossible to defend. I couldn't play out from the back. I couldn't go anywhere. Thankfully, Alisson was the difference in that period let's have a look 3.2 xg for burnley and 2.9 for me we have got away with one there thank you very much to alison becker and we take the three points we think this is now going to be the start of the january transfer window so let's have a look at what we're going to be doing so after that match we have a number of emails firstly saying that robertson has gone up to an 88 that's fine you scored monthly port i'm not too bothered about Cumetio and Reese Williams already um, accepted deals to go away for two-year loans. And then obviously the transfer market is open. What do they want? Elliot's happy that he's playing. Proud of you. That's nice. And uh, Trent's happy to have been put straight back in the team. However, now, because it is the transfer window, we have a couple of decisions to be made. It's looking increasingly likely that we're going to sign a right back like I was saying in that in that um, bit where Neko Williams wasn't doing particularly well obviously Anderson Arroyo is off like he's not just not going to play for Liverpool but Neko Williams is he's doing really well on loan at Fulham and he has a high potential in FIFA but whether he's going to be a, a potential you know adversary to Trent down the line I have absolutely no idea we are heavily linked with a guy by the name of Calvin Ramsey, Ramsey, who um, who is a Scottish right back. I think he's only 19 or something, and he's just won the Scottish Young Player of the Year with a number of assists. And we're heavily linked with signing him in the next few weeks um, for I think it was maybe four to five million, but with add-ons it could rise to nine to ten. So if we're looking at him. And we've also got Connor Bradley. Obviously, we don't have Connor Bradley on this career mode because I started it um, before he was 
um, included in the first team squad could Neko Williams be loaned out or could we sell him or do you guys want to keep him as number one uh, uh, as number two sorry the number one back up to Trent and um, have Calvin Ramsey come in as being num- as number three in 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 the initial um, the initial chance the other thing is is that Oxlade Chamberlain is heavily linked with a move away this summer obviously this would have been the last window in this career mode and I think I'm going to have to transfer list him because it's just so unlikely that he's going to be still at Liverpool this time next year. I just can't see it happening. He hasn't got the game time. He has only one year left on his contract. If anyone comes in with just like a decent, I think maybe even £10 million bid, would you probably let him go for something along those lines? So, yeah, I think it's more of a case of just getting him off the wage bill, especially in a year where we're going to be renewing the contracts, hopefully, of Salah, Mane, Firmino... Um, Keita has a deal to renew like there's a lot of deals that we need to renew I just don't think a guy like Oxley chamberlain on the money he's on with playing such a limited amount of games I don't think he's going to be at the club for very much longer it's a shame he was doing so well um, before that injury against Roma that that goal against Manchester City alone was just fantastic you know he was a, he's been a really good player for us it's just a shame he's been so hampered with injuries at, in his time here the only other issue that we have to talk about is Karim Adeyemi has just been signed by Borussia Dortmund as their Erling Haaland replacement. It, it took them only something like 90 minutes after the announcement for Haaland was in for them to announce Adeyemi. And I'm sure he's going to go on and be an incredible footballer for Dortmund. And then in, undoubtedly, once he gets too good for Dortmund, someone else will sign him. It's just the way at Dortmund. I mean, it must be gutting being a Dortmund fan. You've got Haaland, you've got Bellingham, you've got Sancho, and you just know that you can't hold on to these guys because the club just don't have... It's just it's just selling club at the end of the day. And, and obviously, they're going to get more exciting players in. Adeyemi is one of them, but it's just the same is going to happen. In a few years' time, he's going to move on to somewhere else. Whether that will be Liverpool in two or three years' time, I would love it to be, but in... For the purposes of this career mode, I think we've got to let him go. It's not realistic to have him at this time. He's been here for a year, and now it's time for him to go off. That does mean, however, we are a short, a right winger. We have Mo Salah as our first choice right winger, and then our only others are Marshall Rutty, who's probably a little bit too low rated to be you know, our, our second choice. And then Taki Minamino, I'm happy to play him as a second choice right winger for the time being. However... Um, it's also increasingly likely that he will leave the club this summer or next summer um, because he hasn't had enough game time either so I I think that obviously our our forwards we do have the backup at the moment with the likes of Mane and Diaz and I mean even Elliot can play on the right wing but if you guys have a suggestion for a right winger that you guys would like to get like me to pick up in the January transfer window then let me know in the comments so from you guys I would like to know what to do with Neko Williams which right winger to get and what to do with Oxlade Chamberlain whether I should get a replacement for him this window or I should just hold out and get another big signing in the summer for example one of the players that we are being linked with at the moment is Tuchua Mene from um, Monaco obviously I don't want to pick him up in the January transfer window because I don't think that's realistic it's a really big transfer fee to expect someone to pay in January we're already top of the league I'd much prefer to pick him up at the end of the season or for example someone like a Jacob Ramsey or a Gavi or someone else along those lines we've obviously picked up Bellingham already but if we could go out and get another big midfielder that is going to be there for a long time I'd much rather do that in the summer than in January but let me know what you guys think um, in the comment section and yeah I'll basically judge it off that we have um, an offer from Real Madrid for Nabilad but I don't think I'm going to accept it he's he's actually been very good in real life recently and I think it's looking increasingly likely that he's going to be staying at the club for a long time. He's turning, hopefully, into the midfielder that Klopp actually bought, rather than um, just someone who's injury-prone. And um, we've also got a lot of confirmation, just that I've, I put a bunch of the Youth Academy players and other guys on the loan list, so hopefully they can get a little bit more game time as they go elsewhere. Obviously, I kept James Norris at the club um, in the summer because... 
Uh, Robbo was still out with a long-term injury, but now Robbo's back. I think it makes sense for him to head out on loan. But now we've got this big game versus Man City. Oh, just before, maybe we go out and sign Calvin Ramsey right now. I think that could be a good idea. He only costs 1.1 million. He's 64 rated and 19 years old. Let's go and put in an offer for the young Scottish um, right back. I think um, he's got two star week foot. He's he's got good stats. If you look at it, uh, look at it here. He's high high, five ten. Apart from the weak foot, he's pretty well rounded, um, and obviously we can get him. Um, we can get him upgraded a lot more with dynamic potential, etc. Um, he also has the early crosser trait, so much like Trent, he, he's supposed to be a bit of a beast down that wing. Let's see if they would take anyone from those players that we signed that now we we are actually looking to let go. For example, Kozlowski. Would he? Would they be interested? Maybe, maybe his wages are a little bit too high. I know that sometimes the AI don't like doing swap deals because we're obviously paying these guys ridiculous wages and um, it's, they, they just can't afford it. But, oh no, I've asked... Oh, for God's sake. Oh well. I mean, at least Arroyo's finally going to leave, but I've accidentally paid 1.1 million, which is what they wanted, and given them Arroyo. But at the end of the day, it's an extra squad, um, extra space in the squad that I've paid 1 mil for and I've got guy off the wage bill so we probably save a million over the course of the season just from that guy's wages alone so not the end of the world let's try and get this guy signed up for five years no release clause he wants a release clause no i'm sorry mate we do not do release clauses we're too big a club to offer release clauses i'll give you do you want like 5k and then maybe 150 that's like five times your wages every week and that's very happy with that that's our first signing of the january window there are hopefully will be more to come in the next episode let me go let me know what you guys think of um, our business so far and what you'd like me to do but let's get into the final game of the episode so here we go the first leg at the etihad of the carabao cup joe gomez leads out the men he's the captain today um in the absence of van dyke hendo uh allison basically anyone else joe gomez is the most experienced man uh who's been at the club club the longest um so he is wearing the armband today um i will note that i have changed the manchester city team because in previous games we've faced them with diaz at right back but now due to the due to being able to change their team round, i've put kyle walker at right back and Diaz is playing centre-back. So I also put Phil Foden um, up top for them. I, they, they were playing a strong team. So I decided to keep their team strong. Like I, I, It's not down to me to like decide whether their cup squad should play or whatever. Like They can keep their team whatever they were playing. But if their players are in the wrong position, then I'm going to move them. That's, that's, that's how I see it. Um, I also did decide to play Foden up top because they had Dolberg, Dolberg who's 81 rated. As a striker, and I just I put Foden in. Maybe that was the wrong decision. Maybe he's going to kill me now. But Foden's 87 rated, and he was fully fit. But they didn't have him in the team because they had Dolberg there. So I, d I decided to put him in. Um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me. They're knocking it about nicely. Here is that danger man, Foden. Thankfully, Konate is there to stop it. I'm playing with. Um, I'm playing with a very rotated side, um, by the way. I've got... Um, let's hopefully see if we can win this. I'm playing my fullbacks. Um, my, oh, literally, exactly as I was trying to say. Phil Foden, the guy who I brought in for Manchester City, has opened the scoring for them. Um, I was trying to say that I've got Simicast, Neko Williams, Kelleher, Canate and Gomez as my back. Uh, back line and keeper in midfield I've got a little bit of a stronger team I've got Elliot Fabinho and Thiago and then up top I've got Diaz on the right Mane on the left and Bobby Firmino through the middle so a couple of key players getting rests like Van Dijk Allison, uh, Salah but um, the rest of the team is is uh, and, and then obviously Robbo and Trent getting rests as well and then the rest of the team is pretty much um, first choice or there or thereabouts 
Well done, Fabinho, to win that header. Elliot's going to take the space on offer. Cross goal. Hmm. Fabinho loses out in the air to Rodri, but that's a foul, isn't it? I mean, they haven't given it. Come on, Thiago. No. Back to Elliot. Oh, that's such nice skill. Luis Diaz. That would have been so nice. The turn there. It's a good save right by Stefan. They managed to clear it, but it's only as far as Simicast. Simicast can carry the ball. Move the ball to Thiago. Hit that. Oh, it's another great save by Stefan. Let's see what we can do from the resulting corner. Canate wins the header. Oh, he headed that down really nicely. I mean, in all seriousness, a 1-0 loss in the away leg isn't the end of the world. But it would be nice to take something back to Anfield with us. I say that as they go down our wing. Mm. Joe Gomez, well done. Brilliant from Gomez. We might be able to get a counter-attack here. I see the run from Mane, but I'm going to go through the middle to Bobby. Hit it, Bobby. Oh, Bobby Firmino! I just hit it because I thought the defender, I thought Laporte was going to cut across. So I, I didn't think I had the time to take a touch or anything. Just smack it, try and win a corner or something. But a corner compared to an absolute rifle of a goal, I will take the goal any day. What a finish from Bobby Firmino. This will be a really good angle. Yeah, I just thought Laporte was going to come in. He sort of didn't, didn't come forward as much as I expected him to. I'm going to take Thiago off for Cater, fresh legs in that midfield. Yeah, the, I just expected Laporte to come across and take the ball off him. Just more hit it out of hope than anything else. Hope to win a corner, but we'll take a goal. We've got the ball, we could counter-attack. Mohamed Salah has just come on, he's got fresh legs. Salah versus Laporte. Cuts in. Tries to move the ball. Oh no, I've been scrambled a bit here no good defence Simicast what can he do plays the pass into Naby Curtis Jones Curtis Jones the substitute gets surely the winner in the 89th minute that is fantastic I thought I'd butchered the chance when I went to Simicast and he got caught up by Chiesa I think it was but he just resets Back into Mane, and then bang. What a finish. That is an absolute pile driver. No chance that Stefan's going to be saving that. Don't know why the City fans are celebrating. Maybe they're just jumping in anger. But that is huge. If we could take this lead back to Anfield for the second leg, that would be fantastic. Let's just hold out for the remaining three minutes. We're in trouble here. We're in serious trouble. Canate, someone get the ball. Oh my god. Oh my god, who was that off the line? Simicas. No. What have you done? What have you done, Keller? No. No way. That was absolutely devastating. Carnage in front of our goal. Kelleher is sat distraught on the floor. I don't know what he's doing. And then Simicast tries to win the header, but Chiesa's goal side. And no one can get back onto the line in time like Simicast had just done a moment before. That's gutting. I mean, I'll take a draw back to Anfield, but it could have been so, so much better. So on that note, it is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comment section on those points that I asked earlier. Another hugely successful episode. Obviously, if we could have just got over the line against Man City, it would have been incredible. But at least we are still in for a competition um, in the away leg, uh, in the home leg, sorry, which will come in the next episode after the game at Rotherham, the game at Bournemouth, and then the game at Wolves. Hopefully we will get some new reinforcements in the transfer window and let me know what you guys think of the episode. Is there anything I've missed out? Is there any news that you think, Freddie, we're linked with this guy. We've got to go out and sign him. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.